Hi, in today's video we're going to be talking about the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This is the system that provides hormonal control of blood pressure and it is mediated via the blood flow through the kidney. To understand this topic you'll first need to know the anatomy of blood supply through the kidney and the main component of the kidney which is called the nephron. If you'd like to learn more about this first then please do watch my other video linked in the description. Blood enters the kidneys via the renal arteries. From here there is further branching and dividing of the arteries until finally terminating as small clumps of capillaries called glomeruli. Each glomerulus is enclosed by the Bowman's capsule and together the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule form the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle is where the first stage of urine formation occurs as plasma is filtered out of the glomerulus into the Bowman space where from here it drains into the proximal tubuli. Let's take a closer look at how this works. Blood enters the glomerulus via the afferent arteriole. It then enters a glomerular capillary, where around 20% of the plasma is filtered out into the Bowman space. The remaining 80% leaves the glomerulus via the efferent arteriole. The force driving plasma out of the glomerulus into the Bowman space is called the filtration pressure. The filtration pressure is determined by the difference in diameter of the afferent and efferent arteriole. The afferent arteriole has a much larger diameter compared to the efferent arteriole, which creates positive pressure inside the glomerulus. From here, the plasma containing water and electrolytes such as sodium and potassium enters the proximal tubuli and continues through the nephron, reaching the loop of Henle and then the distal convoluted tubuli. The distal convoluted tubuli actually comes back into contact with the afferent and efferent arterioles at the junction of where they enter the glomerulus. The afferent and efferent arteriole, along with the distal convoluted tubuli, form the juxtaglomerular apparatus. At the juxtaglomerular apparatus, the distal convoluted tubuli has specialised epithelial cells called macular denser cells. These macular denser cells control the activity of another specialised epithelial cell called the juxtaglomerular cell. The kidney aims to keep the amount of plasma being filtered out of the glomerulus into the proximal tubuli at a constant. And remember, we know that the amount of plasma being filtered out is determined by the filtration pressure which is dependent on the difference in diameter between the afferent and efferent arteriole. So the kidney controls the amount of plasma being filtered via a mechanism called tubuloglomerular feedback. This feedback mechanism links the amount of sodium in the distal convoluted tubuli and the diameter of the afferent arteriole. Let's take a closer look at the tubuloglomerular feedback and see how it works. With a normal glomerular filtration rate, plasma containing sodium filters out of the glomerulus into the Bowman space and then into the proximal tubuli. In the proximal tubuli, sodium is reabsorbed at a constant rate, and the plasma continues through the nephron to reach the distal convoluted tubuli. Macular denser cells in the epithelium of the distal convoluted tubuli detect the sodium levels inside the distal convoluted tubuli which at normal filtration pressures will be normal. Now let's take a look to see what would happen if glomerular filtration rate was to fall. A lower glomerular filtration rate would mean less plasma and consequently less sodium being filtered out of the glomerulus into the proximal tubuli. The proximal tubuli will still continue to absorb sodium at the same rate. However now, when the plasma reaches the distal convoluted tubuli, there is a much lower concentration of sodium. Macular denser cells now detect the reduced sodium and it triggers two effects. First, the tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism is initiated and this causes the afferent arteriole to increase in diameter and this consequently raises the filtration pressure and therefore increases the glomerular filtration rate. Secondly, macular denser cells also activate juxtaglomerular cells, which causes the enzyme renin to be released into the bloodstream. So how does renin work? 
Well, when it's released into circulation from juxtaglomerular cells, it travels in the blood, where it functions to activate a globular protein secreted from the liver called angiotensinogen. This activated protein is called angiotensin 1. However, angiotensin 1 still requires further modification before having any effect. As angiotensin 1 circulates in the blood, it is again cleaved, but this time by a second enzyme which is found in the endothelium of the capillaries in the lungs. This enzyme is aptly named angiotensin converting enzyme, and this causes the formation of angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is now in its fully activated form. It circulates in the blood and activates angiotensin receptors, which are found in a wide range of places throughout the body. Therefore, angiotensin 2 has a whole heap of effects, all of which contribute towards raising the glomerular filtration rate. In blood vessels, angiotensin receptor activation triggers the constriction of smooth muscles of arterioles via phospholipase C activation, which causes blood pressure to increase. In the brain, there is stimulation of the posterior pituitary gland, which causes the release of antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone increases the amount of water being reabsorbed in the collecting ducts of the kidney, thus raising blood volume and consequently blood pressure. Not only this, angiotensin II also raises sympathetic activity. In the adrenal gland, Angiotensin II stimulates the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. Aldosterone is a mineralocorticoid steroid hormone, which also affects the kidneys. It causes an upregulation of epithelial sodium channels in the walls of the distal convoluted tubuli. This causes the kidney to reabsorb more sodium and return it to circulation. The increase in serum sodium also restores blood volume by drawing water back into the blood from tissues due to its osmotic effects. Not only this, but angiotensin II also has direct effects on the kidney to increase sodium and water reabsorption, and it also causes efferent arterial constriction, further raising the filtration pressure. The renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system runs via negative feedback. It becomes activated initially due to a low sodium concentration inside the distal convoluted tubuli, which triggers the activation of macular denser cells, which then stimulates the release of renin from juxtaglomerular cells. After successfully restoring sodium levels in the distal convoluted tubuli, through increase in blood pressure and blood volume, the macular denser cells are no longer activated, and therefore renin is no longer released from the juxtaglomerular cells. Hopefully you found this video helpful, if you have a like would always be appreciated. If you're interested in finding out any more about the kidney then please do take a look at my channel for other videos.